Guess what time it is? What is up, everybody? It's Greet service time, right? Yes. And look, I'm here. Fast, yes. And, 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 and we're matching. Yeah, we're representing the flowers. You the know what flowers? it is. flowers. Get it? Flowers. flowers. The flowers. Get it. Squad. <laughs> What is up, everybody? I'm I hope that you're tonight. having a wonderful night. I got the rib with me. I'm here tonight, y'all. He didn't he did, he did brought me up here again. Y'all pray for me. Girl, pray you, for me. You got oil for this. Praise the Lord. Just stretch your hands and say, she oily. Yeah, she got I oil for this. I receive it. <laughs> I receive it. Listen, y'all, um, we are so honored to serve you. Thank you so much for all of the love. And I believe tonight is just going to be profound and powerful. Amen. Uh, we already dealt with Mr. Mr. Insecure. Insecure. Who are we talking about tonight? Miss Insecure. Miss So it's In the ladies' turn, you know. Yeah. Like, we, like he always says, we're equal sex offenders. Mm -hmm. so we never Sometimes just... it offends you, <laughs> but other times it offends right. you. But as long as it brings forth... What, healing. healing and transformation healing. and all that good stuff. So, yeah. ladies, it's our it's our turn. Mm -hmm. I'm in this I'm in this boat too. Yeah. See, I'm smart. I'm smart. I was like, okay, we're not gonna be up here talking about insecurity in your sisters without having a woman represent on behalf of the sisters. Because it was it would seem one sided. It right? would. It would. You know? So. And this, this is all a, a war. It's all about the the whole series war world war, war me. So you know we're warring against all of. This. Stuff. Yeah, so and we can be free. And I just felt like we can't just have one particular night dealing with insecurity because the things that men struggle with with insecurity is different than what the ladies struggle with. I agree. I it, agree. When it comes to insecurity, so um, if you would go ahead and take your screenshot, tag us, share this, <laughs> tell somebody we're on that they want to come catch us live for the World War Me series part number. Three. Three. So uh, let's get to work. Um, we're not going to be before you long, but to the best of our capability and, of course, to the empowering, and empowering of the Holy Spirit, we're going to be strong. So um, <laughs> Genesis. Genesis uh, chapter 3 is going to be our foundational text. Genesis chapter 3, we're going to launch our reading at verse 1. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, it says... Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat nor shall you touch it, lest ye die. Side note, let's not have conversations with snakes. Right. Number two, never try to explain yourself to a snake. All right. Amen. All right. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. God's lying. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves coverings. Where we're going to come for your life and the foundational text for tonight for part three of this World War Me series lives and takes residence in verse four. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. I'll surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like him knowing good and evil. So, Father God, use us in this moment. Help us to expose the tactics, the strategies, the assaults of the enemy so that we can step over demonic landmines that will try to trip us up. We pray, Father God, in this moment, all the study means nothing if you don't use us, if we don't make much of you. And my typical request for both of us, oh God, allow us to be your PA system, your spokesman, your oracles, so we can touch the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, 
Everybody who agrees with that prayer, would you drop the comment in the room? Amen. Duh. Amen. At the D there. Amen. Amen. Make it extra duh. churchy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat the fruit, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, a little backdrop about this story to bring this biblical passage to life. Being a student pastor for nine years taught me to make sure that the scriptures come alive. So we're going to make this come alive. I need you to understand that Eve is the baddest woman on the planet. And when I mean bad, I mean good. All right. She is the absolute most beautiful woman in the world, true, literally. True, true, true. <laughs> She is the only woman, the first woman and the last woman who ever walked planet Earth, and she was perfect. That's true. Before the fall of man, before sin came into the world, this woman is perfect. She was. Flawless. She has no concerns. She has no needs. There's, There's no nothing. Sin. There's no, no sin. She's perfect. There's nothing for her to stress about. Yeah. Let's put this in proper perspective. She is the original Miss Universe. <laughs> If there's a pageantry, it don't matter your platform. It doesn't matter how you look. Eve, she got this, bruh. Ma'am, take several seats. <laughs> Eve has this. She is the most gorgeous. She's flawless. Yeah. Eyebrows on fleek. Wow. If you don't know what fleek means, it means they're arched rather nicely. Wow. She is perfect. Breath smelling sweet because we don't have nothing offensive. Wow. Bodily, her body is heavenly. <laughs> wow, trying to okay. make this come to life. Look, yeah. look, future wives and wives, God is trying to give y'all some notes. He's saying, listen, if you want to have the best alarm clock for your husband, just stand there butt naked. Just stand oh, there. We going. Butt naked. I'm giving y'all a Bible. Jay didn't make this up. You going, you, really? You're... <laughs> God is so cold. He was like, this is what I'm going to do for my dude. I'm going to have it when he wakes up. He just going to see this beautiful woman standing there butt naked. That's how she got her name. Y'all probably didn't know it. Ooh, Adam looked at her and he was like, whoa, man. <laughs> whoa. Something's wrong. With Take you. notes. Something. Take know, notes. Y'all stretch your hand <laughs> towards him. Yes, yeah, she's perfect. Everything is just right. And oh, what does hell do when everything seems to be just right? right. What does the enemy tend to do when you have the right prayer life and mm. you have the right perspective and okay. you now have the right posture and you're now making the right choices and you now have the right devotion and you're now listening to the right sermons and you're now going to the right churches. As soon as you're in a position where everything is right, the enemy will always try to create and conjure up some scenario, some situation. Y'all not talking to me. Right, He'll right. try to send you some counterfeit, some distraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll usually choose the counterfeit yeah. because God sense and counterfeits usually come in the same season. Uh -huh. And the reason we keep on picking the counterfeit is because the counterfeit is our preference. Mm. Y'all don't want to talk. Okay. He usually sends something to try to distract you and make you question yourself. Question yourself. You won't surely die. Yeah. God knows if, if, if you eat this fruit, you're going to be like him, knowing the good and the evil. What is Satan really doing here? He's saying, Eve, you're not enough. Hmm. You're not enough. Okay. Is that not the fine print statement of the voice of insecurity? You're not enough. Not enough. And I firmly believe that is the typhoon that is swirling in the heart of women all across the globe. That's good. Not enough. Not enough. You're not enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're not young enough. Yeah. You're not saved enough. Right. You're not clean enough. Yeah. You're not educated enough. Yeah. You are not enough. And since we don't believe that we're enough, we'll forever live our life trying to climb this invisible ladder to try to obtain this fruit. We're forever trying to climb this invisible ladder, trying to obtain this fruit. And when we grab a hold of something, we bite it. We bite into that relationship. I told you we're coming for your life. Yeah. You bite into that relationship. You bite into that depression. Yeah. You yeah. bite into that marijuana. You bite into that cheap sex. You bite into that hookah bar. You bite into the strip bar. Okay. You bite into things only to find out the aftertaste of this does not please the taste buds of my insecurity, in fact, 
it separated me from the one who gives me security. Wow, that's if, good. If, if the undertone for men, the security in us is to be strong, to be solid, act like nothing hurt, the undertone for women is to try to be enough. Constantly trying to fit in. Yeah. Constantly trying to be enough. What can I do to be pretty enough, smart enough, good enough, clean enough? Yeah. Constantly trying to be enough. Yeah. And she doesn't even recognize she's already like God. He says, if you eat this fruit, you'll be like God. But she's already like God. Can we talk? She's already like God because God doesn't make failures. Right. God doesn't make accidents. Right. God doesn't make mistakes. Right. Everything about our culture and everything about our society yeah. is constantly trying to remove the blemish. That's good. <laughs> you can get this procedure to fix your lips. You can get this procedure to fix your cheeks. You can get this procedure to give you bigger breasts. Yeah. You can get this procedure to get a bigger backside. Yeah, yeah. You can get this procedure to remove the mold, to yeah. remove the freckles. Yeah. I guess they don't understand. It is our blemishes that proves that we're authentic. That's good. Amen. Amen. It Amen. is our blemishes that proves that we are the real thing. Yeah. That mold is, the, is proof that you are the real thing. Those freckles are proof that you are the real thing. Mm -hmm. And we're constantly trying to change ourselves because until we get to the place to where God is enough. Yes. For like preaching, we just an in introduction. Yes. Until we get to the place to where God is enough, you'll never be enough. That's good. Because you'll constantly be the clay looking up to the potter and said, yeah. you made a mistake. You didn't make me right. You didn't form me right. right. And when we live a life like this where we're insecure, we'll forever be eating forbidden fruit offered to us by snakes. Come on. Ooh. Help us, Lord. We want to talk from part three of this World War Me series, Miss Insecure. Come get me, Miss Flowers. I'm sweating <laughs> so, already. So um, I feel inse insecurities can be spawned from multiple different things, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I want to highlight just three um, that I feel like God gave me. And the first one, insecurity spawned from lies and deceit. Mm. So when you think about what the enemy did or what Satan did in the garden with Eve, you know, he, he deceived her. He tricked yeah. her. And so when he said to her, um, you, you know, you'll be like God. Mm -hmm. You'll be like God. And like Jerry said just a second ago, she was already like God. Yeah. So he's basically the deception and the lies to her is like, you're, you're not enough. You really could be a little bit more, yeah. right? And so I think what happens, the enemy is constantly making us compare ourselves. So she, she probably was like, well, if I'm, if I'm, not, I'm not like God now, then I, I, I need to be more. So she, she was comparing herself to God, but she was already like God. Like, like he said, she was oh. perfect. Yeah. So I think insecurities spawn comparison. And I know yeah. that's a big thing for women. Like we, we see women, all we see stars on TV yeah. and we, um, we compare ourselves. I know that that was something that I did and I struggled with for a long time. Um, from the time I was a child on up to my adulthood, it was comparing myself to everyone, my sister, mm. my cousins, my friends, all throughout life. I was constantly comparing myself, um, because of lies and deceit that the enemy um, was kind of just planting in my mind. Yeah. And so I think the problem is with comparison is that we rob ourselves of what the true beauty of, of God's creation. That's good. Because God's creation is you. Yeah. And what God created is good. Yeah. Everything that God created was good. And so when we're saying, when we look at someone else and we start comparing based on insecurities, based on lies and deceit that the enemy tells us, then we're saying, God, you messed up. God, you, you know, in all of his infinite wisdom, you know, the, the, the God that slung the stars in the sky and made all vegetation and made the human body and anatomy, the God that, you know, knows the very counsel on your head and the God that controls the oceans and the winds and the waves yeah. and, and he controls the earth's orbit and all the other planets, the, 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 this immaculate, amazing, all-sufficient God yeah. Ah, man, you, you kind of messed up on me. <laughs> that's what we're saying when, we, when yeah. we compare ourselves to other people, and that's what the enemy does. He, he makes these insecurities. Um, he lies to us about who we are, mm -hmm. like he did to Eve, yeah. and then we start comparing ourselves to other women and other people and, uh, and, 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 and other lives. 
And, and, and we forget that God is the author and the finisher of our faith. He didn't uh, miss a chapter. Yeah. Okay? He, he writes, he, his, his story is going to be just right, just for you. And, yeah. and your story can't be someone else's story because then it would be somebody else's story. It's your story. And God didn't make a mistake. He didn't leave a chapter out. He, he didn't make a mistake. And I think we forget that, um, that he is the, uh, the, the all-sufficient, all-knowing, amazing God. Yeah. And so the enemy uses these insecurities. And I feel this, the, the, the second one um, that I think uh, insecurities come from is instability. Um, mm. And I say this because... That's um, good, girl. Well, I think instability because um, when you think about children, right? And I'm a teacher. Those of you know, I'm an educator by profession. So good. Um, when you have an environment that is stable, they say you want to have a structured, stable mm -hmm. environment, or even as a parent, you want to have a structured and stable environment because when you have a, a structured and stable environment, yeah. then a child um, is more confident in their learning. Um, they're more secure. They feel safe. You yeah. know, and and there's you know, it, and they can be more successful in that type of in, environment. So yeah. a lot of us, because we grew up in environments of instability, hmm. right? Of a lot of craziness, and and we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know maybe when our mom or dad was coming home, or we didn't know what our, where our next meal was coming from, or we didn't know where uh, where were we going to live from this week to you know. Maybe you just had a, a, a just an unstable environment. Right. Then that can foster insecurities as well. Hmm. And I know for me personally, when I when I really looked back and I and I started tackling my own insecurities and my own uh, low self esteem issues because you know insecurities. And comparison leads to low self-esteem. It all gets tied together. So, so um, I, when I looked back and I saw the instability in my own life, I remember my mother doing the best that she could, could being a, a single mother, but I realized I didn't have the constant protection of my father. Hmm. So that instability in my life caused insecurities in me. Because yeah. I didn't have a, a, a stable, safe secure environment for me to be confident in myself because I didn't have the stable environment that God intended for me to have because, yeah. you know, because my father did what he wanted to do. Then I, I, I got left unprotected yeah. to a certain extent. And so that allowed the enemy to plant seeds of insecurity and low self-esteem because I had an unstable environment. Right. So when you, when you think about a house, right, that is being built you don't want to have a, a, a house built on a faulty foundation. Yeah. You want a secure foundation. And a lot yeah. of us, we're, we're houses that have been built on faulty foundations. And our walls are just crumbling down. And we keep trying to build, you know, things up. And we wonder why this relationship doesn't work. Or maybe this career doesn't work. Or maybe, you know, this venture doesn't work. Or maybe yeah. this choice doesn't work. Why doesn't this work? Because we're constantly building walls that are unstable because the foundation from the beginning was messed up. Preach, girl. So what, what has to happen is you've got to go back to the beginning and allow God to start you over and rebuild you. That's why we have to be re reborn in him. We have to allow God to remake us, make us over, make us anew so he can reestablish our foundation and yeah. he can build strong walls because it's strong fortified walls. Okay. When you think about a structure or a, a city, okay. Uh, back in the day when they had walls, right? Unpenetrable, unpenetrable walls, right? They can't, can't be penetrated. When you have walls that are fortified and strong, nothing can get in there, right? Because yeah. you built this strong foundation in these strong walls. And when we allow the word of God and we build our lives on the word of God and we allow that foundation to reshape us and reform us so we can build our house, our house, our temple on something solid because of the instability that we may have started up, uh, may have started on, then we won't have those insecurities. Then we can grow in confidence and grow in faith and grow in security because we know that our foundation is built on Christ. Yeah. Our foundation is built on him. And so some of us just need to allow God to rebuild us, yeah. quite honestly. And then the last thing uh, I know that insecurities um, are built from or spawn from is rejection. Hmm. Um, a lot of us is like, I, you, you may not even have had a whole lot of those insecurity issues, but that man rejected you. Yeah. That, 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 that relationship, that, that ex-husband, whatever you went through, that made you feel like I made the mistake or 
I'm the one that's messed up or what's wrong with me or why did he leave me or why did he walk out or why do they keep doing this to me or why did this happen? You, because you've been rejected. The enemy has made you feel like you're not enough and made you feel insecure. So you may find yourself doing things over and over again and you keep repeating this vicious cycle because you keep getting rejected. And when we really need to understand that God has already accepted us, yeah. he's already accepted you and he will never reject you. And if we, uh, if we find our acceptance in Christ and, and his love and his, and if we find ourselves in, in, in his arms and if we go to that place in him, yeah. then you can be made new again and you can be confident in who God's created you to be. I, I really struggle with that my whole life. Like, Everybody's prettier than me. Everybody's smarter than me. Everybody's better than me. Everybody's skinnier than me. Everybody's smarter than me. Everybody more, is more talented than I am. I, I, I struggled with that for years, for years and decades, constantly comparing myself, feeling insecure, knowing that I had an unstable environment. But when you meet Christ and you allow him, seriously, when you allow him and you allow him to wash you um, with the word of God and 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 believe what the word of God says about you, that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. He calls us his workmanship and that he didn't make a mistake on you. And when you just really realize that the word of God is truth and not accept the lies of the enemy anymore, then you can walk in power and you can walk in confidence and you yeah. can walk in strength and you can walk in stability because yeah. you found your solid rock in Christ. Yeah. Um, you said something so powerful. We're going to touch on it a little bit in the message, but I think a lot of us don't recognize that insecurity is due to what we believe. And security is also due to what we believe. Amen. If we can learn to unbelieve the lie and learn to fall in love and believe the truth, we'll loosen the grip of insecurities um, hold on us. Amen. And you said something I was thinking about, um, two things I was thinking about. First, when you was like insecurity breeds forth, uh, it comes from instability. I was thinking about um, the time when we were having our daughter and we were, we were um, like everything that could go wrong went wrong. Oh, everything yeah. that could go wrong, umbilical cord wrapped around her neck, yeah. uh, heart rate dropping, everything that could go wrong went wrong. It was like a scene from a movie. We're in this room and uh, our doctor comes in, and I think she said, what, stat or something? She said some word. She said something. It was like, yes. And it was like 15 doctors burst yeah, in the nurse, room. Nurses and, and you know, Do Doctors and nurses. I'm not, it was like 10 of us all running down the hallway. I don't know what's going on. We all running down the hallway, and our doctor's on the edge of the bed. We know now she was literally pushing our daughter back in my wife yeah. because the more she was coming down, the more she was being choked by the umbilical cord. Yeah. And so we didn't know all this at the time. We're running down the hall like a scene from a movie, and they go in this room, and it's like, yeah, let's go, let's go. And the door is not about to come. She said, no, 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 you can't come in yet. You have to put these on. We'll come right back to get you. Door shuts. In that moment, just standing outside that door, the only foundation I had was my prayer, my belief. Amen. That was it. Now, that, like, when the Bible says the ungodly have no hope, that statement just hit me right then and there. What if I had no hope that God heard my prayers? What if I had no hope that God would work this out? What if I had no hope that all things would work together? In that moment, all I begin to do is say, God, you, you heard my prayers. I, I've laid my hand on my wife's stomach every single night. I prayed over my, my child, and I thank you that all things will, will work out. Yeah. I don't know what else to do. And so a lot of us, the reason you're so stressed is because you have nothing to hope for because you don't have faith in anything. Mm. In that moment, what kept me was my prayers and knowing that God heard me. And so now, of course, our daughter, you know, six years old later, but just that moment of, okay, God, I know you hear me. It just made so much sense. The insecurity that tried to grab my heart in that moment, it really couldn't because I had faith in what I prayed for. Amen. I have faith in what I prayed for. When she was talking about rejection, I think a lot of us are mislabeling um, protection as rejection. See, some of us need to be giving God praise right now. Let me just put this in the room. What if it would have worked? Listen. All this stuff that you tried, what if it would have worked? Listen. There was this time. Glad he, <laughs> glad he left. 
See, a lot of us, you yeah. think that they rejected you. You think that that, like, you think that it's something that you did, and now your insecurity is having you question yourself. You're having an Eve moment. Well, maybe if I eat this fruit, well, maybe if I do this, maybe if I have sex with him, maybe if I let him move in, maybe if I do this, please listen. The bait you use to get him is going to have to be the same bait you use to keep him, and boo-boo, maybe that, that might not even keep him. And a lot of us are trying to figure out what can I do, and I came here to let you know maybe it was never you, just your daddy ran them off. See, I wish we had a sanctuary full of people right now because right now we'd be tearing the church up because I would say somebody give God praise that he ran them off. Ran them off. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't nothing you did. It wasn't nothing you said. God ran them off. Maybe you're so insecure because you're mislabeling protection as rejection. That's good. That's and good. did you want to read this real quick? Your scripture. No, it's just a. Uh, I, I, I understand that what helped me when it came to my insecurities, and what still helps me to this day, because the enemy is constantly going to try to lie to you. He's the father of lies. He's the mm -hmm. father of deception. Right. So he is going to constantly try to make you feel like you're not enough. Right. Like you're not good enough. Like right. you can't do it. Like what you do is going to fail. Mm -hmm. Like who's going to listen to you, or who's going to love you? Like he's constantly lying to you. Yeah. And so you have to combat the lies with the word of God. Like yeah. th there's no other way to defeat him than through the word of God. Yeah. I, the word is powerful. The word is him. Mm -hmm. Like he is the word. Yeah. So when, when you are speaking into yourself, when you're speaking the word into yourself, you're speaking God into yourself because he is his word. You're speaking the power and everything that God contains in yourself. Yeah. So, I mean, I know there's just a few scriptures. I know that Genesis, Which one? Genesis, no, Genesis 126. Then God said, let us make man mm -hmm. kind in our own image and our own likeness. So we have to remember, like, he didn't make a mistake. Yeah. Like, like Eve, like you're made in my likeness. You're made like me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then for he chose you, this is Ephesians 1, 4 through 6, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Hmm. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which has freely given us in the one he loves. So we have to remember, like, we're adopted. We're joint heirs with him. Yeah. Like, we are, in, we are in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Like, there is, there is we, we lack nothing as long as we have him. Yeah. There is nothing that we that we don't possess if we have Christ. Yeah. And and that's why you have to speak the word of God. Whenever the enemy tries to lie to you, no, I am the head and I'm not the tail. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. I am above and not beneath. I, I, I am his workmanship. Like you yeah. have to keep speaking the word because the enemy is going to keep speaking those lies. OK. Yeah. And eventually, if you resist the devil, mm -hmm. then he'll flee. OK. Yeah. Just like he did with Jesus. OK. He kept. Yeah. Speaking those, you know, speaking, trying to use the word against them. But then Jesus was like, nah, don't tempt me. And then he fleed. Okay, so you have to keep speaking the word of God over yourself. Yeah. Women of God, speak the word over yourself. Yeah. Because there's always going to be something that's going to make you feel insecure. Okay. Yeah. There, I mean, here's the thing. There's always going to be somebody that can do the job better. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be a, 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 a more prettier woman. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be, you know, somebody that's smarter. But here's the thing. Can't nobody beat you with being you. Talk. And that's what you, and that's what I think a lot of women. And that's what I had to learn. Like I, God made only one Tanisha flowers. Mm -hmm. OK, I'm, I'm the only one. I'm, a, I'm the original on mm -hmm. this earth. And God made no mistakes. So when you own that and you walk in that with confidence and power, listen, nothing can stop you. Yeah. Nothing can stop you. Nobody can beat you with being you. And you can't beat nobody else. Yeah. Okay, and God placed you on this earth specifically to do something. And that nobody else can do what you were called to do on this earth. Yeah. So when we walk in the power and the might that God has called, like, what, what can we be in? What, what should we be insecure for? Yeah. We, we have power. God has given us the power to, to overcome and to... To, uh, tread upon serpents and scorpions. He's given you all the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Like, what, what do we have to be afraid of? Yeah. What do we have to be insecure about? What do we don't have to, like, we have God on our side at all times. Yeah. 
So there is nothing that we should be afraid, not confident in, or insecure. Now, there's nothing wrong with seeing somebody and admiring them and saying, man, you know what? That motivates me to do better. You know, yeah. like, I see them, I admire them, I look up to them. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to step up my game. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you think that you're lacking something, or when you think that somebody else has something better, or God dealt them a better hand than he, he dealt you, then we're really, it's really a slap in God's face. Yeah. Like, Let's God, you messed up. Yeah, let's, let's get everybody to drop the comment in the room. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. With the hand. With the hand. I've been dealt. I've been dealt. Again, Amen. I'm going to win. Amen. I'm going to win. With the hand. With the hand, I've been dealt. Yes. That's good. And the reason we're, we're giving you so much word is because a lot of us are so insecure because we keep looking to man. We keep looking to man. We keep looking to culture. See, listen to this. Eve bit the fruit, and then what does she do? She then gave it to Adam. A lot of the insecurities that we have were handed to us. Amen. Listen, I'm trying to get you to understand, could you be insecure due to the track meet of your circle, the track meet of your family, the track meet of your friends? So what she did was she extended the fruit to Adam. Here's the question I need you to ask yourself, who's feeding me? Good, good, good. Who's feeding Who's me? Who's feeding me? And number two, what are they feeding me? Come on. And could you be insecure because you're surrounded by a whole bunch of Eves constantly handing you forbidden fruit? Come on. Listen, yes. I, I believe many times when it comes to this insecurity stuff, it's because people fall in one of these three categories. They're either a chef, a waiter, or a customer. They're okay. either a chef, a waiter, or our customer. All right, look at this. You know, we always we have to do an illustration. Oh, this this right here, this right here is basic, but I want them to see this. Um, just slide uh, the bread and stuff up here where they can see this. Slide the bread up here and I'll move this out of the way. No, slide the table up oh, for me. the table. Okay, here we go. Yes, get ready. Get ready, get ready. All right, so you have a chef. Some bread, y'all. There's some bread. This is the worst part. Anybody eat the butt? The I don't eat the butt. You eat the butt? <laughs> I eat the butt if, it's, if I'm hungry. Don't I'm ever hungry. say that again out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's going to have like LOLs all Yeah, yeah, yeah. I eat, I the, eat butt. the butt. <laughs> oh, Lord help. Okay. You played yourself. All right. So, <laughs> so look, look. Here's the thing about chefs. Probably should move this. I think I got this pretty much memorized. Here's the thing about chefs. Chefs are your givers. Okay. Amen. A lot of us, we're chefs. Pastors are chefs. Preachers are chefs. Uh, coaches are chefs. Parents. A lot of us, you are just a natural just giving, giver. Just giving okay? out. Just giving out. All right. Now, now here's the problem. And this is how I'm going to just be open and transparent. I like to be vulnerable for you guys. A chef, you constantly keep on giving to the waiter. Mm -hmm. You constantly keep on giving. Nonstop. You keep on giving. Somebody else comes, you give to them. Then somebody else comes, you give to them. And the crazy thing is a chef confuses many times his or her contribution as confirmation. Because I have my own insecurities and I think that I'm actually secure because how much I'm giving. But the problem is, if I'm a chef and she's the waiter, the waiter's never feeding me. Yeah. Who is feeding you? Who is feeding you? And this is something God dealt with me about because I'm constantly giving bread. You remember that time I told you, I said, man, I was praying and God told me I'm on bread crumbs. Yep. Yes. I'm constantly giving bread and every now and again, I take a bite of it, constantly giving bread and I'm confusing my sample of the meal as my meal. Yeah. And so as I'm giving to everybody else, giving this word and giving this word and giving this song, and giving this live, your plate is full. But I'm left with breadcrumbs. This is how you fall to depression. This is how you fall to adultery. Mm. This is how you fall to alcoholism. This is how you fall to drugs. Because you're confusing your sample of the meal as your meal. And you keep giving out over and over again. Yeah. And nobody's pouring back into you. Mm -hmm. And that's what chefs do. Like, and so when you're constantly pouring out, and that's what... A lot of women do that. I mean, we're, we're talking about miss and secure. So many women do that. We give and we give and we give and we give and we give yep. and we get depleted 
and we feel like we're not enough because nobody's ever giving back to us. And we're, or, yeah. or we don't even allow it sometimes, or we're in the wrong type of circle where people <laughs> keep, you know, leeching off of us. And so we're, we're constantly being, being pulled on. We're constantly being uh, pulled from. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't pour, pour something back into you, yeah. If you don't have something, uh, p someone pouring into you, then you're going to be depleted and you're going to feel insecure. You're going to mm -hmm. feel weak. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel not good enough. You're, you're yeah. going to feel not confident. This is what a lot of our place, plates look like, symbolic of your heart. Mm -hmm. This is what your heart looks like, just crumbs. Because you're constantly giving everything away. And you have people in your life who are waiters. Now, you know what waiters, waiters. do? Waiters, these are people... They ain't tripping. You over here tripping because you don't know how they could sleep after what they just did. But waiters aren't tripping because you feeding them and they getting tips. Yeah. yeah. Look, you got more? Let's switch out. I'm going to have you be the chef. I'm going to be the waiter. Okay. So this is how waiters look. I need more. They need more on table six. Come on, more. Okay, here you go. I need more. All right. More on table five. More. I need more. I need more. Now, I'm so caught up. With taking from her, that she doesn't even recognize that she has nothing to get. She, nobody's giving her anything. Yeah. And I'm cool because the more I take from her, the more tips I'm getting. Right. And so I'm making, see, listen, if you understand this about a restaurant, the chef is where the fire is. Yep. The chef, they're back there cussing. Yep. Number four, we need more sauce. Yep. We need more bread. We need more butter. Yep. Hey, you messed up on this order. The, yep. the, the, the life of a chef could be stressful. It can be. Because yep. they're so caught up with giving. But nobody is feeding them. That's so good. And waiters, many times, they're not bad people. The only time a waiter becomes a bad person is when you don't have a chef. Mm. See, if she has a chef, I could have a friend who's a waiter because I got somebody feeding me. Right. The problem is when nobody's pouring into me. Yeah. When nobody's giving her affirmations, right. when nobody's telling her great job, yeah. when nobody's telling her those flowers look so good on you, pun yeah. intended, <laughs> when nobody's telling her that your hair is gorgeous, mm -hmm. when nobody, and then on top of that, she's not telling herself. Yeah. Chefs, waiters, you know what customers do, right? Customers just take and tip. Yeah. Take and tip. Take and tip. And so a lot of us, because nobody in your life is feeding you, but everybody in your life is taken from you. This is how your life looks. Breadcrumbs. Know why you're so insecure? You're not feeding your mind. Mm. You're not reflecting on all you have because you're giving all you have away. And a lot of times your chefs, they constantly keep pouring for others and watching them drink while they're dying of thirst. Because your applause, your applause for me and your acceptance of me has given me significance because I don't know who I am. Yeah. I don't know who I am. I don't understand that I'm already like God. Yeah. And so I'm constantly trying to please everybody else because if maybe he accepts me, maybe if mom sees how hard I'm working, maybe if my boss sees how good I'm doing this, yeah. maybe if they notice all the weight I've lost, yeah. maybe if they notice I cut my hair, and then you get so upset that nobody notices you because you really think that other people are going to notice everything you're doing, but you haven't noticed the fact that God notices you. Right. Yes. God notices you. Mm -hmm. And so your life, many times... You're giving away stuff that you should be keeping for yourself. It's okay for you to be a giver, but are you keeping your peace of mind too? Right. It, it, it's okay for you to give, but are you still having love in your heart too? Right. Or do you believe the lie somebody told you you're hard to love? You're hard to love. So now you're so insecure because you had somebody counseling you who was a waiter. It's constantly taking things from your life. This is mine. This is mine. And what's worse was when you lie and say, at least it makes them happy, but you're not. Right. And that's what the enemy, he, that, that's, that's the lie that he continues to perpetuate, that, that you're not enough. I mean, that's yeah. what we said at the very beginning, mm -hmm. that, that you're not enough because you've been so depleted. Yeah. And so God wants all the ladies that are listening tonight, tonight to, to, to know that you are enough. Mm -hmm. He made you enough. Yeah. You're not lacking anything. We all can be better, you know, mm -hmm. like growing and we're constantly being um, pruned and, and um, made better through the word of God. But yeah. the, the world standards, 
is what we should not compare ourselves to. And that's what the enemy wants you to, to believe that lie. It's comparing it to the world standards. But when we compare ourselves to God's standards, as long as we have him and we're walking in him, yeah. we have and are everything that we need, honestly, yeah. like, because we have him. Yeah. And so I just encourage a lot of women, from, some, from someone that dealt with a lot of insecurities, fall in love with God and fall in love with yourself. Yeah. That's, it's really important. Like, love yourself because you will continue to deplete yourself and give yourself and give yourself and give yourself if you don't love yourself enough. Yeah. Because you're thinking, you know, if I just keep giving and giving and giving, maybe they'll love me more. Or maybe they'll accept me more. Or maybe they'll like me more. Or maybe yeah. this will fix this. And you keep giving and giving and giving of yourself until yeah. you're depleted. But when you love yourself, you're never going to give somebody so much of you that you don't have enough for you. Hmm. That's yeah. just the truth. Like, you have to be good. Even as a wife and a mother, I have to, I have to remember, like, I got to be good with me up yeah. here. Because I can't give to him. I can't give to God, right? I, hmm. I can't give to him. I can't give to my children. I can't give to the world yeah. if I'm so depleted because I'm giving and I'm giving. And then, and then the enemy may say, look, you can't get this right. Mm -hmm. You're not good enough. You keep messing up. You can't yeah. organize. You can't plan. Look at your, look at your house. Look at, like, you know, he, 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 <laughs> your children acting like this. Look, yeah. man, you keep getting arguments with your husband. So he'll keep yeah. making you feel insecurity, insecure because you keep giving and giving and giving. And, but still, you got to stop and say, no, I'm enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm built for this. I got this. My, my foundation is built on Christ. Yeah. So he's given me everything I need. Yeah. Okay. I don't have a faulty foundation. I have a yeah. solid rock. I have a solid foundation that my yeah. house is built on. Yeah. And I love, I, and God made me exactly, he put me exactly where I'm supposed to be. I love who I am. And God is going to give me the strength and the wisdom yeah. to do everything that he's called me to be. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. just, I just want to remind you all, love yourself so you yeah. can, so you you won't allow the enemy to keep lying to you. Yeah. Because he will if you let him. Yeah, and, and that's what the Lord had convicted me of. It was like, man, you spend so much time giving bread, mm -hmm. but you're not allowing me to make sure that you're fed. And a lot of us are used to living life on fumes. When your gas light comes on in your car, what do you do? <laughs> keep riding. And a lot of us, that's how we are in life. Mm -hmm. On fumes, I'll make it. On fumes, I've been here before. I'm good. Right. On fumes, I know my car. I'm good. And God is saying, I don't want you to be I'm good on fumes. I want you to be fulfilled. Right. And so how do, how do we get free from this? I want, to, I want us to really consider this. The cure is belief. The grip is unbelief. Mm. Okay? The cure is in belief. The grip is in unbelief. All the time in church, a lot of us saying, the devil is a liar. But I have a question. Are you saying the devil is a liar, but then treating God like he is? Somebody, I know you felt that all in the neck bone, right? All up here. You're saying, yeah, the devil's a liar. <laughs> but you're treating God like he is. Look at this. Uh, Psalms 139, verse 4. It says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. Do you believe that or do you believe it's a lie? Romans chapter 8 verse 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Do you believe that? Or do you believe God is just lying to you? Deuteronomy 28, verse 13. It says, and the Lord will make you the head yeah. and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I commanded you today, and are careful to observe them. So God is saying, listen, you the head and you the not the tail. Yeah. You above and not beneath. But listen, there's some principles you got to follow. We talked about this on uh, Sunday. Everybody's cool with the person of Jesus, but we don't like implementing the principles of Jesus. Amen. <sighs> Galatians 6, verse 9, it says, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we might. We shall. It could happen. Yeah. It's a possibility. If I feel like it, I might change my mind. It says, We shall. We shall reap if we do not lose heart. So God gave you a promise. Yeah, God gave you a good. promise. 
He said, listen, man, I understand that it can be difficult doing good, but don't get weary because in due season, this means if you're a Christian, you don't have four seasons. You got five. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you got due season. And here's the problem. You can tell when fall is coming because the leaves are changing. Yeah. You can tell when winter is coming depending on where you are in the world because the snow starts falling. Yeah. You can tell when spring is coming because the bees start buzzing and the pollen starts to come. Yeah. It, you can tell when it's summer because it starts to get hotter outside. But you cannot tell when due is due. Yeah. You telling me you're going to quit and your due could be next week? Yeah. You telling me you're going to quit and your due could be two weeks from now, two months from now, yeah. two years from now? You never know when your due is due. Amen. So he's saying, listen, don't quit yeah. because you got a due season coming if... Now listen, listen, the devil cannot stop God's principles from working, Amen. That's it. but he can stop your harvest from coming. Y'all miss what I just said. Wow. The devil cannot stop God's principles from working, but he can stop your harvest from coming if he can get you to faint. Whew. So he tries to get you to faint. He tries to get you exhausted. Yeah. He tries to get you weary. He tries to get you tired because he knows that if you keep doing this, you keep praying like this, fasting like this, binging sermons like this, waking up early, praying to God like this, mm -hmm. devoting yourself like this, you're going to enter into a due season. And I can't stop God's principles from working, yeah. but I can stop their harvest from coming if I can get them to faint. So you hear all of this, how, how do I get cured? Get cured of insecurity. You can check part uh, two of this World War Me series, but then also part three. Number one, how do I get cured? Believe believe what do you believe do you believe that you're the head not the tail do you believe that you're above and not beneath do you believe that all things work together do you believe that you shall reap a harvest if you faint not what do you believe yeah. because whatever you believe will also be reflected in how you behave Amen. I'm not saying it's legalism but I am saying if I believe a stove is hot I'm not going to touch it what I believe can be seen in how I live my life. Do you believe? Everybody say believe. Believe. All caps that one, believe. Number two, this one is so good. Find a promise. Find a promise. My promise that I was holding on to was this one I was telling you right now, Galatians 6, 9. Be not weary and well-doing for in due season you'll reap a harvest if you faint not. God made me that promise. That's the one I'm holding on to. A lot of us are so insecure because you don't have nothing you're holding on to. See, Eve was so caught up with trying to find her, with, so caught up trying to make sure that she was enough, she couldn't recognize that she is enough. Right. If you hold on to a promise, it will, he, it will keep you to hold on through a season. Amen. God is like, a lot of us, you are so used to living in survival mode, and I want you to transition into thriving mode. But you got to have a promise. When it's difficult, what promise do you hold on to? Yeah. When you're scared, what promise do you hold on to? When you're doubting, when you're doubting yeah. in the midst of a pandemic, right. what is your promise? I need you to have about four or five of them. Four or five promises that you hold on to. Yeah. And Jerry's was, listen, I'm not going to get weary in doing this because I'm going to reap a harvest. To keep you secure. There you go. To keep you secure in him. You know, we're, we're trying to combat insecurities. And, yeah. and that word, the word of God provides safety and security just yeah. like, um, you know, the example that I gave with the children in an environment, you, they thrive in, in secure and safe environments. And the word of God keeps you safe and secure. So yeah. you, that's where you'll thrive. That's where you'll grow. Um, and, and when you find those promises and you hold on to them and speak them into your life, yeah. you'll have the security. You won't yeah. be insecure. Yeah. Find a promise. Believe. Find a promise. And last one, watch out for snakes. Watch out for snakes. For, oui. for the life of me, I do not know why Eve was talking to this snake. <laughs> and a lot of us were talking to snakes. And the danger of all of this is we have a silent man right next to us. Father was silent. Ooh. Pastor silent. Jeez. Community silent. Adam was supposed to say, hey, listen. This is a person who's talking you out of what God has talked us into. How do you identify a snake? It's the people in your life who make you question what God told you. Yep, that's the snake. I'm talking about people who have venomous mouths. Girl, I heard. Girl, I heard. How you always heard? Who told you? <laughs> Girl, you know this. You know, why are you doing this? Are you sure you should be doing it? Like, why? Like, always making you question. 
Yeah. Don't that? Yeah. Those are snakes. They're making you question something that God has maybe pl placed on the inside of you yeah. or promise that you know a, a calling or, or or an endeavor that that yeah. you know God placed on the inside of you, but they're making you doubt. Yeah. And that's what breeds insecurity as well. Yeah. So man, watch out for snakes. Step on them snakes. A snake could shed its skin, but it cannot shed its nature. And the nature of a snake is to constantly talk you out of what God is talking you and has talked you into. So God, we pray, help us to be able to recognize that you're enough. Instead of trying to climb this ladder to obtain a forbidden fruit, biting into things, relationships, drugs, substances, pornography, stripping, biting into things only to discover that they didn't provide me security, but they removed me further and further away from the person, from you who give true security. Help us to understand that you are enough. You make no mistakes, no flaws, no failures. And let us not give in to the culture that's constantly trying to remove blemishes. Let us fall in love with who we are. In love with who we are. Let us stop being clay and saying, Potter, you made a mistake. Help us to put our trust in you our love in you and let us God not be surrounded by waiters and customers God even though we're giving help us to also be fed fed by your word fed in community feed us oh God so that we won't live our life on E and we put our faith in you our belief in you our trust in you we'll hold on to a promise and give us the wisdom to watch out from the counsel of the enemy in the form of a snake, which is a person that's trying to talk us out of what you talked us into. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.